Well, the top story this hour, as wildfires continue to rage in parts of Australia, at least three people have died with a fourth person missing and also feared dead in New South Wales. In total, there have been 12 fire-related deaths across Australia since... This also includes volunteers and firefighters after a three-year drought in large parts of the nation created tinder dry conditions. Meanwhile, the Premier of New South Wales said that the authorities were working to restore communication with areas cut off by the fires. She has further warned conditions will again deteriorate over the weekend. Well, on your screens are... Uh, images of the aerial footage of the burnt properties in the Australian states of Victoria and New South Wales where a whole of the suburban streets appear decimated. And these are the devastating images that were captured in an aerial video camera that you see on your screens where uh, huge areas, huge localities in the worst affected regions of Australia, which primarily have been devastated due to the bushfires. And while well, joining us live on the show is Peter Kalmus, who is a climate scientist. Uh, he's joining us from Los Angeles. Well, uh, Mr. Kalmus, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. First of all, I'd like to ask you, we are seeing lives being lost every single day. We are seeing people struggle uh, to live through this unprecedented condition. Uh, in your opinion, what exactly seems to be causing this situation this year for Australia? Well, it is absolutely 100% tied to global heating and climate breakdown. So the two main things that are making the fires worse are more extreme heat waves, so very hot weather, and then increased drought, so a lack of rain, especially over the last three years in Australia. So this creates much drier uh, fuel to burn. Um, there have been many dead trees, and the fires are much more severe. Can uh, throw more light on this red sky phenomenon that we have been witnessing since, since yesterday. Several videos are doing their rounds on the internet. We have been airing them on television as well. What exactly is causing that red sky? Um, I am, I'm actually not sure, but I assume just dust and smoke um, refracting the sunlight. Right, and, and what is the long-term impact of such fires and smoke being present in the air all through the day uh, for weeks at end? Uh, what are the, uh, how long will it t take for uh, these worst affected areas, particularly Victoria and New South Wales, to recover from it? Well, I mean, breathing in smoke is extremely unhealthy, so that's that's a terrible thing, especially for people with asthma. Um, as to when this will end, uh, though usually the peak uh, time for wild for bushfires in Australia is in January and February, so we're not even at the peak time yet. Um, I think variable, but um, I, I've heard that things could get worse uh, later this week. Right. Uh, you, you blamed it on uh, the climate change. You have also been an author uh, of the book, Being the Change, which is Live Well and Spark a Climate Revolution. So uh, looking at the situation right now in Australia, do you think it could have been avoided? Well, um, if we'd started to reduce our global greenhouse gas emissions several decades ago, then yes. Um, it's really remarkable to think, especially since we're just going through the new year into a new decade, we've seen about 0.2, two tenths of a degree Celsius of global heating over the last decade. And we definitely didn't see fires this extreme 10 years ago. So um, this is definitely getting worse. The more fossil fuel we burn, the worse this will get. Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kalmus, for uh, joining us and sharing your expertise with us. Well, they